Hey, this is Kevin Phillips again. Uh, last week I was asked by a student, how do I create a meta blob type animation that I can chuck on top of a live plate for a motion graphics piece? So I had a bit of a think about it and um, thought, well, okay, it's pretty straightforward and light wave. Now it had to kind of cycle and repeat and surge and, and kind of do everything you see here with a nice little liquidy kind of feel to it. So I couldn't really use particle system because of course when you simulate particles a little hard to control exactly what they're going to be doing. So we kind of lose a little bit of artistic control. Instead what I did was I used a point cloud and I used a bunch of morphs and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing I need to do is create a point cloud and this is the thing that we're animating to create our meta blob animation. So let's start, well the way I like to start under create is with a ball bring in for numeric to bring up its settings and you notice here I have tessellation turned on rather than globe because tessellation creates this nice even spread of points because it uses this nice triangular structure rather than the pole with the, the kind of the edge loops running around it which has points at different distances from each other. Okay let's push return to create that sphere and I only need the points or the vertices so let's press K on the keyboard which will kill all the faces and leave me with the points. Now they're a little too even, so I'm going to randomize these up under modify. I have the jitter tool and I've got it set to 250, that should be okay. And there is my starting point cloud. Let's uh, now create three morphs and these morphs are going to produce the animation that I need, the kind of random sliding points that kind of blob in and blob out. So I'm going to make three, I'm going to start with M for morph and go new call them something imaginative like morph 01 for instance that creates my morph so whatever I do now will get recorded as a morph and that's easy enough we go jitter and randomize them again in fact we can use a we've got shift J here use it a couple of times just to really randomize them up okay I'm gonna create a new morph and let's give it a really imaginative name like morph 02 and let's use jitter a couple of times as well. Okay, and let's uh, make one more with the incredibly imaginative name of Morpho 3 and use jitter maybe a couple of times and that'll do. And then we're going to save this. I'm going to save it as meta blob 3. Sounds pretty good. Just overwrite that. Okay, let's send that to layout. And here we go. Let's uh, switch it to vertices so we can see it. Now it's not doing too much, so I need to use those morphs to animate this cycling in and out. So let's go Object, Properties, under Deform, I'm going to activate Morph Mixer, and there are, let's close that, my three morphs. And as you can see by sliding them left and right, I've got this nice vertex animation. So let's make the first morph negative 100. And let's animate this over, let's see, 15 frames. Okay, at frame 15, let's make it 100%. And at frame 30, 15 frames later, let's take it back, take it at negative 100. Okay, I'm going to click on E here, because what I want to do is let's uh, right click and drag out a selection over all of these uh, keys. And change tension to 1 to give it an ease in and an ease out. And then I want it to continue forever. So under pre and post behavior, I'm going to go repeat. And that'll just do that for me. But if I play that now, I've got this nice kind of cycling back and forth animation. But it's a little repetitive. And it's a bit, uh, a bit too much of a pattern to kind of really look kind of cool, I guess. So this is where the next morph comes in. So at frame zero. I'm going to slide this morph apart to 100. Then instead of being exactly the same point, I'm going to just maybe make it 30 instead of 15. So it's uh, half the speed of the other one. Then at 60, back. Repeat that with the uh, graph editor. Okay, right click, select everything, tension of 1. And then we say repeat forever. Now the reason I'm doing pre-behavior, um, you notice here, because even though it's kind of, well it doesn't make any sense because it's before the animation starts, but if we've got motion blur uh, applied to this later on, um, it will help with 
that by having a little bit of a pre-animation up to frame zero. Okay, so play that back. This kind of nice fluid motion going on here. Okay, so a little bit too repetitive still. Okay, so let's uh, do the third morph. Let's go negative 100 at frame zero. Let's make it 25, so it's a little faster. And at frame 50, negative 100. Click that, they bring up the graph editor, repeat. Let's go repeat and repeat. And then let's play this back. Okay, now it's a bit more of a random look to the motion. Not too bad. Okay, just to make this a little more interesting because it's all being viewed. Let's have a look at camera view from the same angle. You can kind of see the pattern happening here. So we want it to maybe look a little different throughout the animation. So we just go to the rotate tool. Where are we? Rotate. And we'll say maybe here. Let's give a bit of random rotation. At frame 120. Let's just randomly rotate it again. So we have that motion and we also have this kind of spinning animation as well. So it kind of so it's kind of spinning it around and it's giving us this different view from different angles. Okay. Now let's add our funky looking uh, blobs to it. So we've got the animation looking pretty good. Kind of happy with that. I'm going to go to the Windows menu here and go Hypervoxels. Let's move this up to one side. I'm going to double click on Meta Blob. Okay, I'm just going to bring up VPR. Now VPR is in Lightwave 10 upwards. So if you're running an older version of uh, Lightwave, you won't have this. But uh, you can bring up the Viper tool to see your uh, Hypervoxels. And here we go. So I'm going to make this a little bigger because at the moment they're a little bit too separate for my liking. So let me make that 0.4. And let's give it a bit of randomness. So size variation, 100%. There we go. Now under shading, I want to, uh, let's drop the diffuse to nothing. Okay, let's give it a blue color. And you'll not know, see this blue color because we've got no diffuse on it. What I am going to do is give that nice kind of outline look. So under luminosity, I'm going to click T and I'm going to give it a gradient. And I'll say input parameter for gradient is incidence angle. And when it's looking flat onto the camera, so I'll put a key down the bottom here, say zero to get that nice kind of look. Now I can always slide this up to tighten those edges if I want to. Okay, let's leave it there. And uh, specularity, I'm going to give it about 50% to give it a bit of shiny highlight. Uh, let's knock down the glossiness to 20 to just get this kind of nice broad highlight. Now I want these to be tinted blue as well. So under advanced, color highlights 100% to get the whole thing kind of looking like that. And that's literally it. So let's do that. And that looks pretty cool. Now it does fly apart a little too much. Now the nice thing about having morphs is we can always get a modeler and adjust the scale of the morph. So we can push in the effect of vertices coming out too far by just bringing those vertices in a little more in the morph because there's a bit more control. Now in Lightwave 11, 11.03 in particular, they've added in a feature that was in the old hypervoxel system but it got removed some time ago. Um, and we'll have a look at that. Let's go Windows, Hypervoxels. And that under geometry is this thing here called blending scale. So let's make it 60%. And it does make all of the hypervoxels a lot smaller, like 60% of the size. But what it does is it retains that uh, same kind of distance for the blending effect. So it gives these hypervoxels much more of a fluid look. As they get further apart, they have like this very tight kind of globular look where they're pulling together being attracted but being smaller they have this effect that they are uh, kind of more fluid. Now we can also knock this even lower. If, if we knock this to 50% the ones that pull too far apart become completely invisible but the cool effect that we're getting 
is as they pull out you're getting these really nice kind of more viscous kind of pointy shapes like they're all being kind of globbed out like so and I kind of like that so there you go there's the basics um, have a go with that see how you go and have fun